Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron. I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. We're so thankful you're here. I want to talk to us a little bit about Bible interpretation and rightly dividing the word of truth. And I do think this is so vital in understanding the Bible. First of all, most of us, myself included, we have to be so careful not to go into the Word of God with preconceived notions, a priori ideas, our past experiences, and superimposing that on what the Scripture says. We want to know what was God speaking in Scripture. I do appreciate people that are able to do that objectively. I've known several people able to do that objectively, but then not apply it to their life. They're like, well, this is what the Bible says, but I'm going to do what I want anyhow go to some denomination or creed or something such as that. So, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, I mean, it's kind of basic, you know, got the Old Testament, and I know some people divide it into dispensations. The term dispensation is a biblical term. Dispensationalism is not. I understand what they mean by, you know, innocence and conscience and law, those type things. Um, there's some that are called hyper dispensationalist. Um, but rightly dividing the word of truth is of paramount importance. I mean, why isn't there a temple in Jerusalem? Why don't Christians do sacrifices? Because Christians, Christ, is our once and for all sacrifice. So obviously, even our Bible is split in two, not just 66 books, but two major divisions, the Old Testament or Old Covenant and New Testament and New Covenant. So things it's very clear when you read in the new testament that there were times of things god winked at you know Acts 17 but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent jesus in the sermon on the mount you've heard it said this but i'm telling you there's a higher standard and a higher law and so it gets down to even like the thief on the cross well, obviously Jesus was still alive talking to the thief on the cross, so he wouldn't have the gospel necessarily applied to his life, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so rightly dividing the word of truth is extraordinarily important. And basically, let's say in the New Testament, you have the four gospels, which is the life of Jesus. You have the book of Acts, which is how the disciples applied the teachings of Jesus with the Holy Spirit power falling in Acts chapter 2. And then the epistles are people that were saved from the book of Acts time period. And then the book of Revelation will obviously be future things. I know it sounds simplistic, but it's true. There's so often so many things in the epistles people want to culturalize and say that was just for them. But when you look at it in context, it's actually for all people everywhere in the New Testament era. The only reason they want to culturalize it is because not very many people are doing it and they don't want to stand out and be weird. It is very difficult when you just kind of make up your mind you're going to serve the Lord no matter what happens. There's been a few books out recently, one by a man, one by a woman about the year of living biblically and, and these type things and living in booths during the Feast of Booths and all kinds of things such as that. But again, this was a whole different time period. Same God we're serving. He did come in flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. But again, an entirely different time period. So rightly dividing the word of truth is extremely vital. I know some people that would say Acts 2.38 is for the Jews, but it's not for the Gentiles. Yet, when you go to the book of Romans, you go to the first Corinthians a couple different times, when you go to Hebrews, when you go to, which Hebrews would be for Hebrews, that type of thing, when you go to Titus 3.5, go to uh, Ephesians, go to Colossians 2, you've got these Gentile churches still applying Acts 2.38 to their life. You don't have to take a 23 and Me test to find out whether it's a gospel to the Jew or to the Gentile. 
He's broken down the middle wall of partition. And so, yes, Peter preached to the Jews primarily, but he also preached to Gentiles. And Paul preached to the Gentiles primarily, but he also preached much to the Jews. Even Ananias told him he would do that in Acts chapter 9. So there's one gospel, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We're supposed to be holy. We're supposed to live for God. And so rightly dividing the word of truth, I would say, is extraordinarily vital. It's almost essential, I would say, to one's salvation. It's just vital for understanding the word of God. And even though the principles in the Old Testament, he's the same God, not all the application is for the New Testament. Some people kind of put it like ceremonial law is done away with, but the moral law is still obligatory. Of course, Christians should live by the morals of the Ten Commandments, and even more so through the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of them. So I hope this helps a little bit. I just want to encourage you to really rightly divide the word of truth. There are several Bible studies out that do that. I'm thinking of search for truth and exploring God's word and some other ones, a place prepared for you is a fantastic one. There's others as well. But just rightly dividing the word of truth. When you read something in the Old Testament, you know, no, you're not supposed to attack this one and do this to that one and all this kind of stuff. That was in the Old Testament. We're living under grace. We're living in a different time period. Same God. It was just fulfilled in Jesus Christ all those punishments and things. So God bless. I love you. Hey, hit the bell notification when you subscribe. Check out our playlist. We're just so thankful you're here. Invite your friends, family, Sunday school classes to watch us. Share it on social media. Share it with others. God bless. See you later. Bye-bye.